Well, I think it's uh, when you're very, when your career has gone quite a while, and, it's, and you want to cash out, then you would sell your publishing, and there's a million buyers out there. They all want to buy catalogs, and there's multiples times earnings that determine usually the price. And some major artists I thought would never divest themselves of their publishing did. I guess maybe they think they're not going to be recording much in the future, and that uh, they want they wanted to, to get a lump sum all at one time. And uh, the administration of the copyrights takes time and money. But with, with publishing, I always, first of all, they usually wind up with a 50-50 split. And I would always want to have the right to buy that back. If, we ha if you're forced to give up part of it. Uh, I'd want it net of administration so that that percentage isn't whacked off the artist side. And uh, so you have, more, you have more than they do. The uh, pub, their major publishers, Warner Chapel, EMI, multi-millions of compositions that they own and or control. And they're smaller independent publishers. Um, I personally like, because this is a global business, to work with sub-publishers. So I will work, I will get a deal, let's say, in uh, Sweden, I'm, I'm sorry, in, Scan in uh, Scandinavia, with a, one publisher. I may deal with another publisher in the United Kingdom. I may deal with another publisher for a block, like the continental Europe. In Japan, I'm going to deal with uh, another publisher, like Tayo Music is a good publisher in Japan. And so by doing it this way, the advance you receive, if you do well in the market, you recoup. Whereas with the overall advance, it's all seductive at first, you may do fabulous in a bunch of markets, but abysmal in another, and you're not going to benefit because it's all one advance that you, they, they must be recouped. And a lot of publishers are just banks, they collect money. You know, to me, an active publisher is trying to get cover records, trying to get this artist to record your song so you can you know, make money on it, get it in commercials, films. You know, they're very active. Now, they have different departments. And all of them will tell you, well, this is our film and television department. And they, they try to push our writers for those uh, uh, purposes. But um, I'm not uh, really convinced that with their departments that they're really servicing the majority of the, of the uh, people assigned to their publishing company. And their catalog is, is their savings account, so to speak. Um, I have you know, made worldwide deals. But it just depends on the type of artist, you know, what, what we're dealing with. But uh, I consider publishing like an annuity. I always tell my clients, save it, keep it. You know, if we're going to do it, why, why sell it? Why not license it for a finite term? Let's make a sub-publishing deal for three years. When that's over, they don't own any part of your publishing. It comes back to you. During the interim, they have the incentive because of their percentage of uh, receipts to try to exploit the copyrights. And the manager should then be pushing the publisher. I think the mistake that's made is all of a sudden someone gets an advance for record, get an advance for the publishing, they're happy. And two years later, they're really unhappy. But um, it, it's, certainly, it's certainly worth exploring both sides of the street. And then you've got some times where you have just, you know, you don't have the publishing share because you wrote a, a work for hire. You wrote something for a film, and the film company's gonna own it. And the film company, if you write something for Paramount, Famous Music is the publishing uh, company. And they're going to uh, you know, have it, and if they exploit it in any way, you will get your writer's share, which they can't take away from you. But um, basically, it's a, a matter of uh, being aware as to what your role and relationship is to the party that you're dealing with. Now, I've had clients that have t told me that they own the whole copyright, and it just didn't seem right to me. <laughs> or they wrote for this film, and they, it's now in a commercial, they're all excited, and they go, uh, it's a work for hire. And work for hire under the Copyright Act means that you're being compensated to work for, you're hired by that film company to deliver that particular product.